Hey guys, it's Carol with Refunction Crafts, and um, today I'm going to bring you a video on how I make these compact mirrors. Now I know I have, and excuse me, I do have paint on my hands. I used um, spray paint this morning to paint some boxes that I'm going to be working on that are going to be gorgeous, so um, I wanted to get started painting those. So my hands got a little bit um, of the overspray from the paint. So, um, anyway, that's why my hands look so awful, and I'm sorry about that. Um, and I think, not that it makes a difference, but I get a lot of comments on this as to why I haven't been wearing my bracelet. Here's my bow bracelet. Um, haven't worn it in a little while doing my videos, and it used to be my, my go-to when I was doing um, my videos. So, I'm going to wear that today. Um, I keep it in my craft room, and I also wear it to work and out sometimes, but <laughs> this is a compact mirror that I did, um, and I actually made this compact mirror to go with a box that I did, and you guys are not going to believe it. This is the box that I made, and look at the top of this thing. Oh my gosh, you guys. This box came out so gorgeous. Um... I had made another one. This is the back side. And this is just an old box that I found at a thrift store. Again, I do a lot of thrift store hunting to try and find things that I think will, um, will be great to repurpose. And so this box is one of my, um, really one of my favorites. Um, it actually had some metal detailing on the top that I, I just had spray painted the entire thing white. It was a brown wooden box. I had spray painted the entire thing white and then decorated the top. But this is the box that I made that goes with this compact mirror. And I have them in my Etsy store as a set. Um, I just thought it would be a pretty set to make together because the compact matches the box and it might be a nice Christmas gift for somebody. So anyway, we're going to be doing another one of these compact mirrors today. Um, I am making this video in honor of my very, very good friend, Dee. Um, she wanted me to do a tutorial on a compact like this one. Um, and then I'm gonna, she's gonna buy a kit in my store that I'm gonna put together, especially for her, um, so that she can make one of her own. So, anyways, Dee, this video is for you. So I hope you're watching it, and I hope you enjoy it, and I hope it helps you um, to to make your own. Um, sorry, my dog is barking because her dad. My husband is outside probably talking to someone and she doesn't like when he talks to other people. <laughs> she gets jealous. Um, so anyways, we're going to be using this nap napkin to Mod Podge the top of this compact mirror. And what I've done is, these are the mirrors that I use. And I get these at Michael's. And I generally almost always take the rhinestones out of the top unless I'm going to be decorating in a way that those rhinestones are beneficial to my design. I generally take them off, which is what I did on this one. I took the rhinestones off and then I painted the internal part of the, the top and it kind of dips down at the top. I painted that so that I can Mod Podge a piece of this napkin to the top of this to get my base design. And what I did was I just took my napkin, of course, let me move this one. This is the piece that I took. It's a three-ply napkin. I took two plies off of the back and kept the top part. And then what I did, and I found that this works perfectly, I have these um, spools of rhinestone chain. And if you, if you put one of these spools on the top of this compact, it's perfect. For marking out the spot on your napkin that you want to cut out to put on the top. So that's what I did here. I just used this, decided where I wanted to cut it out, drew with a pencil around the design, and cut it out. So just so you guys know, just a little tip trick for uh, these compact mirrors, and I buy these again at Michael's. Um, 
it's the perfect size if you have any of these spools. Now some of them are different sizes, but this one in particular fits um, perfectly. And let me get my ruler for you so that I can tell you how big around this one is. It is actually about two and a half inches in diameter. So hopefully that helps you. Um, if you've got some of those spools laying around, don't throw them away. Use them, use them as uh, um, templates. So what we're going to do is I'm going to be placing this and the reason that I paint this white is because these napkins, once you take the plies off of them, you can see the difference in the brightness on the pattern. There's a reason that you take them apart though because it's it when you're mod podging, it's much easier to mod podge this one layer. You'll get less wrinkles and you'll have less problems with it if you just use that top ply. So if I paint the bottom of this white, then the brightness of the flower comes back out and I'm good. So that's what I did and I painted this ahead of time just to save time. Um, there is a little bit, it's not, you can see it's not perfectly white on top, but it, it's enough that um, it will do the trick. So I'm going to be using some Mod Podge today and this is just the Gloss Luster Mod Podge. I'm going to be using some Rhinestone Chain. I have some bits and pieces of really cool um, bling and some resin roses that I get from Kiki's sale over on Facebook. I've got a couple of little angels. Now I'm not going to use all of this. I'm going to choose bits and pieces as I go. I like to have lots of choices when I'm doing a video because I do change my mind quite frequently. I e even have some little filigree pieces that I may use bits and pieces from. Um, I have some little leaves. So always when you're working on a project like this, make sure you have lots of options. These are some little sort of brass toned leaves. These are just little filigree pieces and what I do with these generally if I use them is I cut them up into smaller pieces if I need them for a smaller uh, item that I'm making so that I can um, tailor them to my piece. Um, and then I also have this little pretty bow. I have some other little bits. I'm not sure if I'm going to use them or not, but we'll see as we go. And then I also have one of these little uh, Be Joyful. Um, this is, I guess, used for a bracelet, but it's it's something that I got in a piece of Happy Mail that uh, from a. a, a sweet friend. Um, I get a lot of happy mail packages from people who send me things so that I can continue to keep crafting. And let me tell you, it's it's been a blessing for me um, to, to keep me going. Um, and one of the projects that I'm going to be doing coming up is I'm going to be doing a box for a memory box for my mother. As most of you know, my mother passed away last year. And I've, I've, I'm wanting to make a memory box, but I just couldn't really decide exactly how I wanted it to look. So those pieces that I'm going to be using are starting to come together now, and I'm excited to get started on it. I found th the box that I want to use, so that was kind of the biggest thing. So let's go ahead. Um, we're going to get started. One of the uh, Some of the other things that I have here is I have some toothpicks. I always keep those around because I use them for different little little things. I have one of my little rhinestone pickers that I made using wax and toothpicks. I have a video that you can watch and I'll put a link in the description box below so that you can get to my video on how to make those rhinestone pickers. They work amazing. Um, and you don't have to pay, you know, a bunch of money to purchase the ones um, you know that you buy online or at Michaels or what have you so I'm going to be using that and I have a, a regular rhinestone picker that you purchase that I'm kind of saving I've got it put aside because I am starting to run out of my little wax ones right now but I'm saving it my friend Candace sent that to me and um, I will be pulling that out of the package pretty soon um, but anyway um, 
trying to think if there's anything else that I want to tell you before I get started. I think we're just going to get going on this so that this video isn't astronomically long. So we're going to open up our Mod Podge here. This part takes only a minute, and I keep my handy dandy. My friend Kim sent me a um, a wonderful um, heat gun that I keep close by when, especially when I'm doing my videos. It has been a godsend for me because when I'm working on something that I need to dry quickly um, between processes I'm able to use that so I'll put this Mod Podge on I'll put the piece on top the rose and I'm going to turn this in my direction so that I can see exactly how I want to display the image on here and I'm going to gently put that on there, make sure it's centered, and I'm just going to brush over the top. And on something small like this, it's really easy to get it on there and get it, do it quickly. So you'll see this process really is not super time consuming, but it is super fun and therapeutic for me. I enjoy Mod Podging. I'm finding I'm enjoying it more and more lately what with making all of my my um, jewelry boxes and memory boxes and things so um, I'm having a lot of fun with Mod Podging so um, hopefully you guys aren't getting sick of those videos and I'm gonna put my brush in the water and what I'm gonna do this is something that I've found kinda helps me when I've got the Mod Podge on they're not very hard but I like to go over the top of this with my finger because I can pretty much press out any wrinkles that might be on the top of this napkin. And you'll see I chose yellow today as my color, uh, theme color. I've been making a lot of the pink ones and I thought, you know, we're going to do a different color today. So I'm just going to use my, my heat gun that my friend Kim sent me and I'm just going to kind of go over the top real quick. That Mod Podge dries relatively quickly. At least enough that I can I can work on this now. And it's just, it's touchable, it's not going anywhere. And so that's what the top is going to look like once I get my, my flowers on there. And then I'm going to take some of this rhinestone chain and I just re realized I'm going to open up a new container of E6000 because my other one is getting all gloppy and I feel like it's kind of getting dry so we're going to take this rhinestone and we're going to go around there's a lip on this um, compact mirror around the outside. I'm gonna I'm gonna glue this rhinestone chain, trying not to get the glue to where it's gonna stick these pieces. Even if it does, if you get some glue on there, don't fear. It, you will be able to get the the compact to open. Just try and limit that as much as possible. Um, and I'm keeping my nippers close by so that. I can knit my chain as soon as I get to the end. I don't cut my chain. I don't usually measure it ahead of time because I always feel like I'm going to measure wrong and then I'm going to have to add a, a little piece in, which is not the end of the world, but um, I like to be able to put it on in one single strand. So I do my best to... Um, and for me, I've been doing this for so long. I've been making these compact mirrors for years now. So I've been doing it so long that I've, I've gotten used to the process. So I, I got a little bit of glue on the top here, but that doesn't really matter because I'm also going to be putting um, possibly some rhinestone chain around the top of this as well. Um, because as you can see in this one, I did put two layers of chain. Um, it's different chain than this one, but I did put two layers on it. Um, and I've got my chain all tangled up here. 
try not to do that. I should have had that prepared before I got started, but I didn't realize it was tangled. Um, so we're just going to go around the entire edge here, keeping the rhinestones facing up. Don't let them face towards the side. And you need to make sure that they're all up before you cut this off because if any of them are turned to the side, it's going to pull the chain so that you won't have enough. Um, it, you, you require more rhinestones, at least probably one more rhinestone, turning them face up than you do if they are facing to the side. It's just how the, the chain lays, I guess, is what makes the difference. So, so I've got that on the outside, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of press this in and make sure all these rhinestones look even around the edge. And there's that. And just look at the difference that that makes. It just is so, so, so pretty. And then I think what I'm going to do with this particular one is I've got, let's see, let's see. I'm trying to see if I have some smaller, no. Not there. I know I do have some smaller rhinestone chain, but I don't have it out at the ready right now. So um, I think I'm just going to use possibly, I'm just going to use another string of this same rhinestone to go around this inside lip here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and unwind some of this so that I'm not struggling with it this time. There we go. And again, I'm going to gently try try to be careful with your E6000 not to get too much on your piece, but enough that it's going to stick because this stuff, I've noticed it kind of oozes out pretty fast. So you can work fast with getting around the edge because you're going to get enough and it's going to, it's going to um, come out across the entire piece. You're not going to have to worry about that. If you missed a spot, take your uh, handy dandy toothpick and just sort of spread it around a little bit and you'll be fine. But just going around that quickly, I was able to get it across the entire top of this piece. And I'm just kind of spreading it a little bit, just making sure. And you want to work fairly quickly with your E6000. It, it gives you working time, but, um, but it does get um, dryish and, and stickier over a few minutes, um, over about five minutes time. And you want to be able to work with these rhinestones to make sure that you're, um, you're, you have an even uh, evenly round piece so you want to be able to play around with it a little bit to adjust your rhinestone chain so I'm just going around the entire edge where the silver lip is and sort of overlapping the edges of that napkin because I don't if there's any edges of that napkin um, that may not, maybe I didn't cut it perfectly round or what have you. I want to make sure that I'm covering those edges up. So I've got that all the way around. You can see it's kind of sloppy right now. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to work with it. And I have to look at it straight on so that I can see what I'm doing here. And it's fairly easy just to eyeball this and get it exactly the way you want it. And you guys, I absolutely love making these compact mirrors. This was this and making bottle night lights was kind of like where I started back into crafting and then also making some of the things that I found on Happy Birds Glitter Nest. Um, Lori over at Happy Birds Glitter Nest is my, um, I'm going to call her, she's my mentor um, because if it wasn't for her, and her channel, 
I wouldn't have gotten back into my crafting and I just adore her. She's the sweetest, kindest person and we've actually become friends, um, you know, just since I've become part of her channel as a subscriber and then part of her Facebook group, which is also called Happy Birds Glitter Nest. And she helped me to get started with my YouTube channel. She helped reduce my fears of getting out there and putting myself out there. So that's what it looks like now with the two layers of rhinestone. And now we're just going to start sort of embellishing it and putting some really pretty um, bits and pieces on it. And I've shown you guys some of the stuff that I have here. And what I do is I just kind of go around it and see, you know, where I might think, you know, some things would be really pretty. And then if there's extra stuff on there, I'll take, I think I am going to use this filigree piece. And I know this is going into, um, you know, using a different kind of metal, but I don't have a problem with that. So um, I'm just going to take that and kind of find a spot that I think that might work as even just kind of a backdrop for some of the other pieces that I'm going to put on here. So I think I'm probably going to put that right about there. And that's going to be, this is looking at it, you're looking at it, this is the bottom of the compact where you open it, and this is where the, the hinge is. So that's kind of where that's going to lay. I like to put something off to one side um, or the other. Actually, since that's the nice pretty big rose, I think I'm going to put it on this side. So... Bye, honey. Love you. Love you. Um, my husband's going to Lowe's. <laughs> um, anyway, he, he doesn't like to interrupt me when I'm trying to do a video. He's so sweet that way. Um, but, yeah, he's got to make a trip to Lowe's today and take some stuff back. Okay. You know, I think... Maybe I'm going to go with this smaller rose, and I'm just going to take my nippers. This piece has some little, um, where you would sew it onto, it's a button. So the, the little hook, or rings where you would sew it onto the fabric or hook it on have to come off because I want my rhinestone pieces to lay as flat as I can. We don't want a whole bunch of, um lift to this on top. It's okay to have layers, but you don't want it to get so thick that that it just doesn't work as a compact mirror. So this is a piece that I think I'm going to put maybe towards one end here. And I also have some resin roses and things, and then I've got actually you guys this is what I do every single time I hope you guys are used to how I work and you don't get too upset I have this little angel too I have a couple of them that I thought I might try but then again I don't I don't know if I want to go with an angel theme on this particular piece because it's the roses um, so you guys do know I kind of tend to vacillate back and forth as to what I'm going to use on my pieces and part of me is saying now I'm going to cut these hooks off of this bigger piece real quick. Sometimes I wish I would just do this before I start my videos but I like to have you guys know that you can take buttons and brooches and all kinds of things and use them um, in your pieces and I know a lot of you probably know you can go sometimes to the thrift stores and buy bags of jewelry really cheap where it's a lot of um, maybe broken pieces of jewelry which is fine um, that you can use in crafting and that's kind of the reason that they do it and some people buy those bags of jewelry to resale. They take out the ones that are good and then they sell the broken stuff as, um, 
uh, crafting supplies for people. So um, it, it works out nicely for those who want to you know, use them for their projects. So I'm just going to kind of go around here and see how I want to have this look. Another thing that I do, and I'm gonna, I think I'm going to grab one real quick. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm looking for an applique. I have these appliques that I get from um, Debbie over at Kiki Sale. And you can see on this one, I have a piece of one of those appliques here over at this edge. And I kind of like the little hanging pearls um, that I get off of that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut a sl uh, this flower out of here just like that, just kind of go around it. And I use these appliques for so many things, so many pieces that I make. Um, and I'm so grateful that I have Debbie as a supplier of these things. She actually um, was able to um, get some of these and order them for me so that I could buy them from her. And I'm just gonna take my little lighter, I keep a lighter at my crafting station, and go in between, because there's like little a little bit of organza between each petal and I don't want that to stick out so I just kind of go in here and any anywhere where I see those little bits of organza I just burn those off um, and then anywhere where there might be a little extra piece of something sitting there so I think I'm not positive if I'm going to even use this on here, but it, it, it is kind of pretty. I love it on the other one. And then I have this little bow. Gosh, having trouble deciding today, you guys. I'd kind of like to use this Be Joyful sign on here somewhere. And maybe even take a couple of these little leaves that I have here. Because you can see we've got the holes here, but I also think the leaves would be kind of pretty kind of coming off the top. And then I've got these other little ivy looking leaves that I can use over the holes in this to cover them up. Um, the only thing is, is I'm going to tell you, Dee, your, your kit, just so you know, may not have all of these um, items in it because I only have one of the Be Joyful signs and things like that. So I just, I'll put a different kit together, but I'll make sure it's gorgeous and you've got lots of cool stuff to use. Um, Oops. Let's make sure this is going to look good. I liked the way I had these leaves. I don't know why I messed with them. We're going to put the leaves kind of coming out at the top. Right there. And maybe these little ivy leaves over those holes. And right now we're in the planning phase, so we're just going to kind of cover things and try to. I'm going to try my rhinestone picker on this and see if I can lift it and move it. It still wants to slip off. Okay, so maybe if I'll put those on there and then come down here and add. I don't know if I want the big bling or the little bling. But we have to have something kind of coming off of this. Now you'll see on this one I have a resin rose right here. 
Now, this resin rose is the same size, but then again, my, my bling piece is that size too. So, I, I think in this case, I'm going to use the bling um, and just kind of work around that to add some more goodies. Oh, you know what? I'm not even going to use these. I think maybe what I'll do, because these are little resin roses, maybe I'll put these resin roses here. Oh, you guys, I'm not loving this. I, I hate to say it, I'm just not loving it. And I'm struggling today with my creativity, I think. <laughs> so maybe this is this one's going to be a lot more blingy than I'm feeling blingy today. That's my problem. I'm feeling like I need sparkle in this piece and lots of it. And then I have my little bow that if I put that kind of over there, that looks really pretty. And then maybe a couple of other little bits of um, these little pearls. I have these flat back pearls that my friend Candace sent me. And I've been waiting to break into them. Actually, I've already broken into them. I can't say that. I've used them on actually several things. Um, and I'm just, I'm just having so much fun. I, I've just, you guys, I cannot tell you how grateful I am to those, to ev all of my subscribers. Number one, all of my subscribers for viewing my channel and for getting on and helping me to grow my channel. I'm up to 40, almost 4,300 subscribers. And while I know that doesn't seem like a lot, considering, you know, what a lot of these YouTubers have, for me, it's 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 been an accomplishment, and I feel really really um, grateful that I'm being able to reach that many people and put out my tutorials and have fun at the same time. So um, thank you everyone for subscribing and for um, for um, helping to support my channel. I, I, honest to goodness, I really, really, really appreciate every one of you. Um, and again, thanks to those of you who have um, contributed to my supplies and keeping me, um, keeping me going. Oh, I love it, I love it. That's, that's gonna be it, I think, you guys. Um, I might decide to put a leaf sort of coming out of the side here and maybe here. I'm not sure, but we'll decide that in the end. So this is, I need to try and keep these flowers sort of the way that I have them. So we're gonna take our E6000. Best glue you're gonna find to keep these things on this compact and not, not falling off. So um, I encourage you to use E6000 or something that is um, similar in strength because this, this last, if you use hot glue, it's not going to stay. I'm going to tell you that right now. Hot glue is not going to be your friend when it comes to making items like these compact mirrors because it loses its grip fairly quickly. It might stay on for, you know, a month or so, but it's not going to stay on for the long haul. And when you're making something like this, you want this to be something that somebody can treasure for pretty much forever. Um, it's a kind of an heirloom piece. Um, at least I like to kind of call it that. It's something that, you know, you might want to hand down to somebody or give as a gift to somebody and you don't want them to come back to you and say, gee... You know, thanks for the gift, but it fell apart, you know, really fast. Um, and actually, what I do is I take a dot of hot glue in a spot where I don't have E6000, and I do press it down so that for right now, while I'm working on this piece, 
I can um, work on it knowing that these pieces are not going to move around. So I just find a couple of little spots where I can put a couple of dots of hot glue and press it down and hold it. And once that hot glue sets, it'll stay there. And I don't have to worry about it falling all over the place or moving or what have you. So now provided that I got the hot glue on the spots that are not covered in E6000, it will stick. Okay, so now I'm going to take my little yellow flower here and I'm going to take, um, I buy these at Kiki Sale. Debbie makes them herself. Occasionally you have to take a file and just kind of round off some of the edges. She makes these out of resin. And every once in a while you get a little piece that, that needs a little bit of cleaning up on the edges. It's no big deal, folks. It files right off. I work with resin myself. And um, so I do know that you know this this stuff will um, easily file down on the edges so that you can make them smooth and then I'm going to take some E6000 on my bow and a little dot of hot glue I'm going to put my bow right below my rose here And then I'm going to take my tiny flowers and I'm just going to place them along the edge here next to the yellow flower to add some detail. After all, it is a rose theme and then I have this rhinestone piece that I cut off of a, a chain that one of my friends sent me. Um, actually, it was Debbie over at Kiki Sale. Um, it's these these little bows, like the one I'm using on this, but it had the bows and the rhinestones in between. So I'm using one of those rhinestones that I cut off. And let's see. I want to make sure my placement is good on these. I feel like I'm going to need a couple of other little little bits and pieces, but we're going to add those in now. So the other thing that I'm going to do, let me wipe off my glue here because I'm going to reposition a couple of things here. I'm going to put that rose there and move this rose up a little bit. Get a dot more of the E6000 on it. There we go. And then I want to push this rhinestone in there. I hate when I get glue on my working surface. It frustrates me. <laughs> um, okay, another little bit of E6000 on this leaf that I'm going to put right here. Maybe a little bit more over here. Because it's sort of hanging on to the edge there. And I want to play with this leaf just a little bit. go and then I think actually I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tiny little ivy leaf and I'm going to put it right in here
Oh my goodness, I keep getting E6000 on my arm here. I keep laying my arm into it. Um, okay, and then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these little rhinestones and pearls that I have here. And I'm just going to kind of place them around a little bit. Um, so usually what I do is I'll just put a couple of dabs of E6000 in the spots where I think I'm, I want to use the rhinestones and the pearls. And I'll just start sort of laying them down in these little spots. Okay, so I know where I've got that glue. And here we go. there with this little rhinestone. I'm using a bigger rhinestone next to that and maybe one of these small pearls right there and a small rhinestone. I think I need a little more E6000 right there just to make sure that rhinestone is going to hold in. We're going to put that there. And you guys see how easy my picker is working? It just picks those rhinestones right up. And I and they drop. When I put it on the glue, they just drop right in. There's a pearl. Just sits right in there. No problem. And I think I'm going to use one of my... No, I don't want the bigger pearls. This is just going to be three little pearls together right here. And I'm going to use a pearl right here and maybe one of these small little rhinestones and another pearl. And again, this one I'm going to go with a little slightly bigger pearl. I'm just going to push it in there and a smaller pearl. Whoops! I dropped it upside down. It's okay, it didn't land in the glue. Yay! <laughs> and then I think I'm going to drop a tiny bit of E6000 sort of on the top of those two little pearls and drop one of these little um, rhinestones there. And let's see, we're going to put one on top. And I'm just flipping these rhinestones over so that I'm getting the side that I want to stick up is sticking up. And then this one we're just going to leave because it dropped in where I had added another dot of glue. And I was going to put one of them there anyway, so we're okay. Um... Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let me grab one more small pearl. And hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. And then in here, I'm again, I'm going to take a dot of E6000 and go above those two. And I'm going to add one more small pearl, a uh, flat back pearl there, if I can get it to flip over and it really does not want to. Okay, I'm going to put that right in there. And then I'm also going to put a pearl right there between these flowers. And that'll be another one of the smaller pearls. Right there where I put that drop of glue and ugh, I put it in sideways. So somehow I need to get my toothpick here and dig that out. Ugh, really does not want to come out and lay it up. There we go.
got it. And these pieces, you can see these pieces are moving around a little bit now, but they're as soon as they dry, that E6000 is going to set in, and they, honest to goodness, will not go anywhere after that. And this looks really, really pretty. I'm going to put, I'm going to add uh, right up on top of this leaf here. I feel like I need something there. So we're going to add a pearl right there. And a pearl. This is one of the bigger pearls. Right in there. And I'm going to kind of push it under this flower right here and add another of the smaller pearls. And maybe a couple of the little rhinestones down below it. Right there. And then we have our little rhinestones. Gonna grab a couple of those and add them These are little flat back rhinestones that I got from my friend Kim and they the color and the they're sort of Aurora boy Aurora Borealis um, rhinestones and they have a flat back and a cone top and they just are so beautiful I love 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 these rhinestones and where did I put the rest of them I set them aside oh Anyway, she sent me a bag of these, and I, I, I use them in everything I do. Um, I just like to lay them around in different places on my pieces, and, and they just add just that perfect amount of sparkle to everything. So I love them. So thank you, Kim, again. You really sent me some stuff that I could use like crazy. Now, you're going to see when you look at this, this is this is our piece. Look at how gorgeous and sparkly that is. I'm going to add even more sparkle to this by adding a little bit of diamond dust on top. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my glossy accents and I'm going to add that all around the top where the image is and this way, when you add this to, the other good thing about this glossy accents is that anywhere where you might have gotten a piece of glue that's kind of at the edge of something, you're not going to see it because the glossy accents is going to cover it up. And so is the diamond dust. So you don't have to worry about some of the little imperfections that you might think you have now. Don't worry about it. You, they're not going to show. There, this is going to cover those up and you're going to add that other sparkle to it and finish it off and it's going to be gorgeous. And so I just add a good coat over the top wherever that image is showing and wherever I can kind of get under my bits and pieces here. And I'm going to add that diamond dust through the center of this compact. So here's my diamond dust. I use um, Floracraft diamond dust. I get this on Amazon and um, I just take my little, I use just a little plastic spoon, break it off and that's my scooper. And I'm just going to sprinkle this in all over that area where I just added my glossy accents. And it ensures that this piece is going to sparkle everywhere. So you're just going to, you're going to love it. And I'm going to put enough on this that I can go over the top and use my finger and tap it down 
Again, as I say in all of my videos where I use diamond dust, do not use diamond dust around children. It's not something that is made to be played with or worked with or anything around children. So I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to kind of go over the top of this. You can use a popsicle stick. I use my finger because my finger will go down in between those bits and pieces of rhinestones and pearls and it will allow me to get in there and tap that down because we want the diamond dust to lay as flat as possible so you don't have a whole bunch of pieces sticking up and that's what it looks like once you put the diamond dust on you guys this is a beautiful beautiful compact I'm going to be putting this in my Etsy store for sale but it just is absolutely stunning they make the best gifts and if you want to make them yourselves get the compact mirrors from Michaels Michaels and um, get yourself you know some broken jewelry pieces some bits and pieces or your craft stash and go to town um, check out Kiki's sale I don't know if she's accepting new members right now she tries to accept them as often as she can but sometimes she's got so many that she doesn't want to um, have people not be able to get stuff she does sales on Saturday nights and so she she likes to try and be mindful that everyone can get in and um, purchase from her. But I know she did just recently let a whole bunch of people, new uh, members in. So maybe she's still allowing new people to come in and, and join the group. But anyway, this is the compact mirror. Let me open it. I kind of hate to open them this fresh but because I don't want to move those rhinestones around. But let me get a good grip on it. Okay. And see, I did get a tiny bit of glue that got on the edge of the, the compact, but that's okay. It opened up, and I'm able to, to get to it. And it's a two-sided mirror. Closes nicely. And I hope you guys really, really enjoyed this video. So here's, here's this yellow one, and here's the one I did before. There's the two of them in front of you there super gorgeous and these make great uh, items that you can add into a set like I'm doing with my box over here I'll show you the box one more time that matches the pink one this is the box I'm gonna back off with my camera a little bit here so you can actually see it pay no attention to the messy work surface here but this is the box that I made it's absolutely gorgeous I love 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 this box and then I went um, oops let me let me turn it around so I can actually get to it okay I'm sorry guys and then there's the inside of the box I haven't done anything to the inside it's just plain white painted box but you guys can see how pretty this piece is and how nicely the compact goes with it so anyway this set is in my Etsy shop if anybody's interested um, and again thank you for watching everybody I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a very 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 blessed day bye bye take care